So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining the 5,523rd meeting of the Rotary Club of Chicago. Uh, we're very happy to have you. Uh, we uh, uh, converted to the Zoom format, as you can tell, and uh, we're attracting people from around the world. I like to begin these meetings with a, with a Rotary moment. And uh, we had a good friend of ours uh, registered from the uh, uh, Lithuania uh, International Club, Lithuania International. I don't see her on the uh, meeting yet, but I would like to go forward with the um, with the Rotary moment. So. We are uh, very good friends with Victoria Trimble, who's pictured here with her daughters, who will be taking over as the first female uh, district governor in District 1462. She was instrumental in founding the Lithuanica International Club, and we worked with her as uh, her sponsor to do that. She has visited our club many times. And the reason why I chose these two pictures to highlight is that you see on the left, uh, 1939 meeting of the first club in uh, Lithuania. So there has been a, a very long history of Rotary in uh, Lithuania, uh, now over 80 years. And uh, the, as I've tried to do in the past, I wanted to contrast the early meetings of Rotary with the um, uh, with the more modern Rotary, and you can see that this is a meeting of all men. And Victoria was not only president of the club, but now she's becoming district governor. And her two daughters, who are pictured in this picture, I understand, are also now Rotarians. So uh, Rotary has changed uh, dramatically over the years, and uh, I wanted to highlight. Uh, this being my last regular meeting, I wanted to highlight a club with which we have a very close tie and with which we look forward to working uh, working in the future. So uh, if uh, Victoria is able to join, uh, I'd like her to say a few words, but at the moment it does not look like uh, she's been able to. So uh, let's proceed uh, with the meeting. Our next uh, uh, next up on the agenda is our thought for the day. And uh, I've asked Eric Kempel, our president-elect, to give uh, what is going to be my last uh, thought for the day uh, at the meeting. Uh, Eric? Thank you very much, Marshall. I guess it's a good way to, to get people used to hearing my voice for the next 365 days. So I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to cheat here and actually steal a quote from Paul Harris that uh, our district just posted on Facebook. May Rotarians continue to be ambassadors of goodwill to high and low, rich and poor, to all races, the devotees of all religious faiths and to members of all political parties. Purveyors of tolerance, forbearance, justice, kindliness, neighborliness and friendliness to the inhabitants of this snug little world the best little world of which we know. Now, I think this is wonderful and timely. When I read this, I have three key takeaways for you. First, as Rotarians, we are ambassadors. I think about this when I travel and interact with others in other countries, often in places where, for example, I'm likely to be the only American these individuals have ever met. The reality of human thinking is that they're likely to base their entire view of what Americans are like based on their interaction with me. I think we need to consider that as Rotarians, the same is often true. And so it is important to internalize and embody the traits of goodwill that Paul Harris described. My second takeaway is empathy, which I find a trait necessary if one wishes to purvey the tolerance, forbearance, justice, kindliness, neighborliness, and friendliness to people of all classes, race, races, faiths, and political parties of which Paul spoke. We may not like another's point of view, but if we can try, legitimately try to get inside their head, we may be at least able to understand why 
they have this point of view, even if we disagree. And that I think facilitates our ability to purvey those traits of goodwill towards others. And finally, my third takeaway is that as Paul more eloquently, eloquently states than this, we're stuck here with each other. Apparently, even to Paul Harris in the first half of the 20th century, the world already seemed like a pretty small place. Of course, now as we sit here live from across the globe on our laptops and smartphones, it is downright minuscule. If you live in a small apartment with several roommates, you better get along or it's gonna be a rough couple of years. So just as you do with the four-way test, I encourage you to recall this quote as you go through your daily lives. Thanks, Marshall. Thank you so much, Eric. To, you've, captured, uh, you've captured the spirit of Rotary and, and it is a good reminder in these days of COVID and everything else that's going on as polarized as the United States is and uh, how much the world is suffering with COVID to remember that, you know, we are all in this together and we need to uh, support each other. And as Rotarians, it is critically important that we, we get out there. So uh, thank you very much. Um, so uh, we are, uh, I'm not sure we have the speaker yet uh, online. Oh, wait, it looks like he is here actually. Uh, Harold? Hey, how's everyone doing? Hey, hey good, how are you? So great. Um, David uh, Hirsch is going to introduce our speaker uh, today. Um, David? You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, thank you, Marshall. It's my honor to introduce my friend, Harold Green, who is a husband and a father of two young boys. Incidentally, he's the 2020 Illinois Father Initiative Honorary Father of the Year as well. He's a former teacher and coach at Chicago Public Schools. Most people recognize him for his poetry. He's been a poet for about 15 years also known as the spoken word artist. He's performed hundreds of times, including at Mayor Rahm Emanuel's inauguration. And I remember reading or hearing, I'm not sure where Harold, uh, that in 2014, you didn't take the ice bucket challenge, but you took the challenge of writing a poem a day. And I'd be curious to know how long that lasted. Um, he's also an author. Um, one of the books that he's authored is from Englewood with love. He grew up in Englewood, Chicago. He's also a not-for-profit leader. He and his wife have started something called Flowers for the Living. And I hope you'll include that in your remarks, Harold. He's also given a TEDx talk entitled, When I Grow Up. What I admired most about you is your passion and speaking from the heart and telling it like you see it. And before we get started with your presentation, we have a short video that I'd like to play. Please welcome poet Harold Green III, reading an original work, Something to Live For. What's more dangerous, someone who's not afraid to die, or one who's found everything to live for? who's found everything to live for. In these uncertain times, I'm thrilled to be introducing my friend, Harold Green. I think we're really in for a special treat. Harold, the Zoom stage is yours. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that gracious and just 
heartwarming introduction, David. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm honored to be before you today. And in the past weeks, I was really trying to figure out, because every day seemed to change, every single day <laughs> since we have confirmed this particular uh, meeting, uh, it feels like the world just continues to change at a, at a rapid pace. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about today. And every time I tried to figure it out, it just kept changing. And I think the one thing that was consistent for me was thinking about how art intertwines with freedom and to have freedom of speech and freedom of agency over, over your art and the ability to use it in such a way in this particular country to reach marginalized groups as well as majorities and be able to create a common ground or be able to open eyes with art, I think has been a constant theme that I've been grappling with ever since I began uh, my career uh, about 16 years ago in college. I went to an HBCU in Louisiana called Grambling State University. And I started writing, mm, I started writing poetry my senior year of, of high school. Uh, prior to that, I had been writing but it was mostly like raps and things of that nature. And I got specifically into poetry my senior year of high school after watching a show on uh, HBO called Deaf Poetry Jam. And I realized that uh, there were people who looked like me, sounded like me, came from environments like me, and they were able to convey certain messages that really hit home with me. And it didn't sound like the academic version of poetry that I was so used to uh, through my maturation in school. So it got me really excited and changed gears for me as far as writing went. And I used that gift that particular year to write poems for my, for my family and, and those who were close and special to me. And from that, I took that and began to perform on stages and across Chicago, all kind of open mics. And I joined a uh, spoken word ministry at a, at a church that I was at at that time. But I think that um, once I got to college, once I got to school down in Grambling, Louisiana, I really realized how far and wide this particular gift was reaching. And it went from doing open mics at school to putting on shows, creating an artist collective, and getting paid to perform and opening up for these large acts. And eventually it became such a thing that they gave me a day on our calendar, our school calendar during our homecoming and spring fest week, which was a huge, huge deal to look at a calendar that was campus wide and to see these big acts and these big, these big events and then to see a day, Harold Green presents, you know? So I knew at that point that this is what I wanted to do. But I knew also that the art that I was creating, uh, the gift that I had was so much bigger than me. And it wasn't just about showing the world that I was talented or how much money I could make via a gift or via a talent. It was also how many people could I reach. And I knew this to be true uh, one summer when I came home from school and I received a piece of parcel that was from a classmate. And it was a picture of her and her newborn son. And uh, on the back of the picture, it read that if it wasn't for me, she wouldn't have met him. And basically, uh, this particular classmate had been dealing with, uh, struggling with also suicide. And at that point, I had just put out my first uh, audio CD called The Green Room, and she had been listening to it on repeat. And from listening to it and listening to it and really kind of dealing with the themes and uh, what was being presented via that audio CD, she figured that she had something to live for. And she figured that, you know, it was it was time to, to, to keep pushing. And because of that, you know, she gave birth and she had a son and all of that great stuff. But that message um, let me know that if I didn't share this gift with the world, I was being selfish. And I think that's a bigger calling than just uh, self-gratification and wanting to be praised for your gifts and wanting to be, you know, recognized for being talented and all that great stuff is knowing that what you're saying could potentially save somebody's life. And that could sound dramatic, but in this instance, it was a true thing. And it's continued to show to be a true thing for not only uh, 
others, but for myself as well. This is, you know, this has been life changing. This has been uh, a revolutionary act over and over again for me to stand up and bravely stand firm in my place and say, hey, this is how I feel. This is how I see it. This is how I know others feel. And to continue to promote and push that message, um, it has helped. And, you know, even, even thinking back to the challenge that David mentioned in the introduction in 2014, um, I actually finished it out. Uh, I started on uh, January 1st of that, of that particular year, and I pushed all the way through to the end of the year to complete a form a day. And I think what was um, so moving about that when we're thinking about freedom of the arts, um, that was a confinement. I was confined to a challenge, to a goal. And every day I wasn't able to lay down or go to sleep comfortably knowing that I had to complete that goal, knowing that I had to fulfill that particular confinement that I placed on myself. But I think what I've learned is that a lot of times confinement and through that box that I put myself in, it's pushing me to be more and more creative. And I think that has been what I what I was noticing when I was thinking about that is that's what I think we see our world going through right now. Like a pandemic has pushed us into a certain box of confinement and and in that confinement we have had to find creative ways to push forward to fight for freedom to revolutionize the way we live and i think that creativity has also been contagious as as much as the pandemic has been contagious i think the creativity in and of itself has been contagious as well and it's been inspiring to watch so many people find ways to push past the confinements while while still you know remaining you know as, as safe as possible and things of that nature. But I think that it has been a living, breathing testimony to confinement pushing creativity. Um, and I and that that kind of has push the theme of what I wanted to talk about today because I've noticed over my career how when we are in positions, whether it's a confinement of the mind, confinement of space, we have to continue to be creative. We have to continue to push for optimism, for positivity, for seeing a brighter future, for seeing our way out of what, to, what seems like confined spaces, whether that be metaphorical or literal, um, we have to find ways to see the light. And um, that leads me into uh, the piece that I wanted to share um, with you all. And then uh, I'll speak about the inspiration that uh, was behind this particular piece. Um, and it's entitled, uh, letter from a Chicago jail. <clears throat> Complacency will be the death of you. Being okay with okay. Mediocrity can get the best of us and the rest of us. Until we are all awakened, there can be no rest for you. The house is still dirty. We just cleaned up the vestibule. My people was promised 40 acres, but we just settled for a mule the day the donkey got beat by the elephant in the room. Giants built pyramids and plantations too. So much beauty from the minds of the oppressed and beaten, but never broken, never be token, be the jackpot, be gold, and never be confused by cynics. Optimism is not wishing and hoping, it's knowing and going, it's seeing and showing, it's believing and being, it's knowing that greater has been promised to you and going to get it. It's seeing a brighter future in darker times. And showing the blind is believing your dreams of divine conversation and being the personification of divine conversations. Optimism ain't frills and fluffs. It's knowing the yellow brick road is behind the lion's den, through the force of attack dogs, over the mountain of supremacy, through the valley of death, under the monsoon of naysayers and still lacing your boots and saying, follow me. Is meeting the Wizard of Oz and telling him you are not my God. I question the tax of alternative facts. It's standing on the shoulders of ancestors just to get a better view of heaven. Optimism is a verb, is an action. 
a real life application of dreaming. It's seeing your way out of the unforeseeable. It is faith's call to action. It's a black boy from Chicago that wrote his way out without giving in, who saw the beauty of his city and his people and wouldn't shut up about it. You are looking at a lucid dreamer. I've decided to control my narrative, to be proud of my heritage while never undermining another's, but never succumbing to mediocrity. Not as long as there's black boys in this city just like me who've never seen an optometrist, so their optimism is a little bit blurry. Too much gunpowder packed up in the corners of their retinas. Too many corners, too much survivor's guilt. So sleep cometh in the morning, or never. Nightmares run rampant when your vision is as bleak as the resources you're surrounded by. And just imagine when this is who you're surrounded by on a daily basis, I mean, you wanna be a light, but you're an isolated oasis eventually smothered by the swamp struggle. Your image has been inverted. This becomes no city for the introverted, so speak now or forever lose your peace. The epidemic of the pessimistic how contagious is it? Are you willing to be a winner or a witness? Are you willing to be a warrior or a witness? What sense is there in waiting on the right time when time has never waited on you? Life will happen with or without you. You might as well have a say in it, a dream is a beacon of light. Dreamers are light towers and this world is made up of oceans. It's hard to navigate these waters in the dark. Some folk can swim their way through the waters. Others just waiting in the water for you to shine your light so they can wade in the water. This is the life of Pi. Dreamers have to illuminate the night so we can believe in a new day. So be an ultralight being. So that particular piece, <laughs> thank you. That particular piece is um, it's inspired by Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail. And it's actually a fragment of a larger production um, called King and Continuum. And um, with that particular project, what I did, I was... Uh, I was an artist in residence at this arts festival in uh, Door, Door County, uh, Wisconsin, last year, I believe. And that week, I was holed up in a, in a dorm room, and I wrote this whole production out. And um, it is a production based on and inspired by the works, speeches, sermons, letters of Martin Luther King Jr., who I'm a huge fan of. And in dissecting Letter from a Birmingham Jail and thinking about the rage and anger that Martin was feeling during that time of those who were questioning his actions while not doing enough themselves, while questioning his actions, and he is sitting in this hole, in this confinement, and having to be creative constantly to break out of these confinements, um, it really inspired my view and, and, and my position in this particular piece. And when you read on Martin's struggles and the work that he did and thinking about that particular jail that he was in um, and how dark and, and damp it was, and it was like in the basement, and it was probably one of the one of the biggest struggles up until that point as far as confinement for him. And normally he was very composed in, in his reactions to people, but this particular um, this particular letter to the white clergy in that particular time really pushed him to a limit that he hadn't hit before. And I think it was because of the surroundings, because of the moment, how much of that was put on top of him, but he still saw the light. He still knew, even though I'm in the midst of this dark, damp place, this hole, I still know that there is light out there. I still know that the sun shines. And that's what I wanted to push as a narrative through this particular piece. And even when um, we're looking at the, 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 the bottom of the piece, and I'm explaining how um, a dream is a beacon of light, you know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm building up to this, this bigger narrative of a dream is a beacon of light. Therefore, you know, dreamers are light towers. So we're, start, we're starting with this small thing. And that's how hope, I think, really is created in these very small molecules, these little atoms, right? So it starts with the dream, which is a beacon of light. But dreamers 
that's a bigger thing. That's a light tower. You know, that's something that that's erected. And the more we build on top of it, the brighter it shines and, and the further we can see it. And, and when ships are out there at sea and all of that great stuff through the midst of the storms and the darkness, that's what we look for, those dreamers. We look for those light towers. And this world is made up of oceans. You know, this world is majority water. So in a, in a lot of, you know, metaphorically, in a lot of situations, we're just really trying to sail through. We're really trying to get through these rough waters. We're really trying to make our way to the light. We're trying to make our way to the light towers. And it's hard to navigate these waters in the dark. Of course, you know, when things get very tight and if things get very troubling or they, they feel very um, pessimistic, we have to look for those lights. And there are some people who can swim. There's also some people who are really looking for these light towers and looking for these dreamers in order to find their way through these dark waters because everyone is not able to swim. Everyone doesn't have that ability. So at the end of it, you have to shine your light because some people are just waiting in the water. Just They just kind of waiting, just kind of paddling, throwing their little hands, you know, waiting to find that light. And we cannot forget to be the light because I, and this is one of my favorite references at the end of the uh, piece, that this this is the life of Pi. And it's, that's referencing back to that that movie, Life of Pi, where they're stranded at, at, at sea. And it's um, him and the tiger on the, on the makeshift uh, raft. And then they look up that one night before they get saved and they see what looks like the Northern Lights. And, and it may seem like a hallucination and whatever, but in the moment, it feels like hope. And this is the life of Pi and the dreamers have to illuminate the night. When it feels the darkest, those of us who, who dream, who hope, who believe, we have to illuminate the night for those who are stuck at sea on a raft. And I even think the whole image of him being with that tiger is important too, because sometimes that's how close we are to our fears. You know, we're, we're right there next to our fears and we're waiting on the light to shine so we can be saved by something. And that next morning, after they see the light and all of that great stuff, they're rescued. And it's just from that little bit of hope of knowing that the light is coming, the, the morning is coming, that lets us know that there is still something there for us. The optimism still has a place. And I think that's what art has the ability to do in the midst of um, being confined, in the midst of uh, lack of light i think that art and obviously i'm pretty biased to this but i think that art has the ability to shine a light and to can continue to um erect these light towers over and over again and i think that we're seeing that in a lot of instances um all across the world um at this particular moment but surely uh in our country at this particular time um, I think that hope and light and, and breaking out of the confinements has been highly important. I um, hope that I've made a semblance of sense, you know, in this particular uh, talk, but I, I would like to move away from my own voice and allow for any uh, commentary, questions, whatever it may be uh, at this particular time. Well, Harold, let me be the first one to say thank you <clears throat> for those illuminating remarks. Um, you do have a gift, a real gift, and uh, thank, thank you, you for sharing a, a smidgen of that with us today. You made reference to these uncertain times. Part of it's the pandemic. A bigger part, I think, is the economic uncertainty that so many Americans and people around the world are feeling. And then in the last month, you know, we've sort of scratched, and I apologize if I offend anybody by saying this, but we've scratched the racial scar on our um, society. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that there's a lot of very positive things that are coming out of this, but unfortunately, it sort of bears some of the ugliness that right. it still exists. And I'm wondering, um, how has your work been influenced, not in the last month, but <clears throat> um, over your 15 years of writing and poetry, how has it been in influenced 
by the racial tension that exists in society. Well, it's been it's been influenced heavily um, because you know, as a black man, as a former black child, like this is something that I live in constantly. You know, so it didn't it didn't just appear for me in this particular moment. It's actually been very interesting to watch this moment um, bubble up and 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 now reach the surface uh, because I've been talking about this forever. You know, so I think. One of the beautiful things is, I think now because we're all we all have been forced to be still, it gives us um, or mandates us to really process these things in a different way. And I think that's a, a, a small part of why we're seeing such huge amounts of solidarity, because so many people are forced to pay attention. You know, I think sometimes we're able to live life in a certain way that atrocities don't bother us as bad as they would if they were right there in our face and we had to sit there and watch them, you know? And I think that's a part of the influence that I've had is I have not had a choice but to deal with it, you know, in, in my particular life and um, being who I am. And therefore it comes out of my work continuously and not even, and, and not in a pessimistic way. And that's the other thing too, even referring back to what I was speaking about, it's been optimism, you know. I I I truly believe that change has change has been creeping through, and I think that this moment is going to open the floodgates for a lot of change, you know. And I'm I'm really looking forward to the long lasting change that will come from this. I'm looking forward to the the short burst of change that will come from this. Um, I think that there's a new day on the horizon. And I think that that influences my art continuously. Like prior to, I was writing to inspire that change, right? And now I'm watching some of those changes actually happen and it's exciting to be a part of and to watch in real time. So, yeah. <laughs> I think we should open it up. Marshall, uh, back to you. Thank you very much, David. And uh, thank you very much, Harold. We do have some questions in the chat box that it would be great if, if you could address. We do have a little bit of time. Um, okay. So Nita, our member Nita asks, how do you inspire people to take the first step if they are used to waiting? You touched upon it, but if you could elaborate on that, it would be great. Yeah, I th you know, I think um, I think sometimes we, especially when we're watching like um, the news, and social media, and different platforms that pick up on huge deeds a lot, um, and sometimes we miss the microcosms that exist in the world. A lot of these big deeds, a lot of these big changes, a lot of these big events happen because of the small things, and I think. If we take those small steps that, um, you know, donating here or um, volunteering there, you know, these different things, having a conversation in this particular space. So just making ourselves uncomfortable uh, and finding out that it's not really that uncomfortable. Uh, I think a lot of these small things lead to the bigger things. And that's and that's a part of what I kind of touched on how you know, hope and, and inspiration and change and all these things, it starts from these small little particles, the, the dreams, right? And, and, and we continue to evolve into these light towers and, and all of these grand gestures, but it starts from a small act. And if we can get over thinking that everything has to be a big deal, um, I think we, are, we can get more comfortable with the small acts. Thank you very much. So um, we're helping fund a grant in that regard for MC School, uh, the, the Rotary Club of Chicago Southeast has uh, a, a global grant uh, to fund that school. Are you familiar with that group? Um, I don't think so. It does deal, I think, and Eric, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it does deal with the spoken word. And so we need to put you in touch with OSE and uh, see if we can uh, we can get you connected with that group because I think you'd make a, a wonderful 
a wonderful addition. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so, um, uh, the um, uh, uh, one of our guests, uh, Janita, asks, is there a way that you can share uh, your poems uh, with others? Um, one of our other members posted your website. Is that the best place to find your poems or are there other? Yeah, um, the, the website is a great resource. And also my YouTube channel has a plethora of poems that a lot of educators across the age groups have used in classrooms to uh, share with students. Yeah, that would be great. And so I refer everyone to Harold's website, which is now on the in the chat box. Um, so uh, let me see if there are any other questions. Uh, I'll open it up. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, ask a question? Um, I would like to ask one more question. Well, what might be one more question? Um, could you talk a little bit about the uh, flowers for the living? Um, I'm really impressed with what you've done with that. Yeah, I would love to. Um, flowers for living actually started um, about 11 years or so ago, and <clears throat> what it what it started as was I'm always trying to as it may come across I'm always trying to be unique and original and creative in the way in which, because a million people do spoken word, but I, I'm always trying to stand out in the crowd, whatever it is that I do. And um, so I'm always trying to find different ways to deliver and, and, and different projects to create that are unique. And that was, that particular year, I said, you know what, from February 1st through the 14th, I'm gonna put out a different love poem every single day. One, because it was Black History Month and I love Black History Month, but my birthday is also on February 13th. So it kind of plays this like uh, Valentine's Eve. So I'm also a big fan of love. So um, I recorded these videos, put them out every day. And then from there it grew the next year, my wife and I got together because she's a singer and she's been working with me ever since college. And uh, we got a pianist and we started doing covers of love songs and I would incorporate my original spoken word pieces. From there, it grew to a pianist and a drummer. Then my wife got uh, pregnant with our second child, so she had to sit out one year, and I called on, like, all our super friends, and that turned into, like, a whole thing. So we had, like, a roster of a whole bunch of singers. Then from there, we got, like, a nine-piece band, and now it's just this huge deal, and I took that, and I turned it into a non-for-profit as well, and I've created um scholarships and uh do work with cps cta google um so many different entities and it's just been a thrill to watch an idea blossom like that and and evolve and bloom in the way that it has because the whole idea behind it is through my art i've always wanted to make sure that people feel loved, feel cared for. And I'm a big believer that we have to tell people how we feel while they're here. You know, that's the whole reason for the title Flowers for Living, which we, we can get so caught up in the uh, theatrics and the, and the gestures when people leave here. But what are we doing for the ones that we love and the ones that we respect and admire while they're here? Are we telling them, hey, your work is great. Hey, that thing you did is amazing. Hey, you look great today. All of these great affirmations that we can think of once people leave but when they're here have we have we is it lost on them you know and and that's what i'm trying to do with my art that's what i'm trying to teach you know to the youth uh that's what i'm trying to make sure it's conveyed time and time again we cannot forget about each other while we're here together well thank you harold so much uh for being here i you know i was struck from David's introduction that you grew up in Englewood and so much of the news we hear about the city and about the world is negative. And you are a living, breathing reminder yeah. that, uh, you know, the light shines everywhere yep. and that people are the same everywhere and talent rises to the top. And uh, we so much appreciate you striking a positive tone because I think as Rotarians, uh, 
we feel that deep in our soul. And so this year we have given a, a little token of our appreciation to our speakers. And based on your presentation, it's particularly appropriate for you. Uh, we partnered with an organization called Ignite, which teaches uh, youth in Chicago uh, glass blowing skills. And oh, nice. It's a custom votive with a candle. And usually I tell people that it reminds us that service ignites our souls. Uh, but I think with you, it's particularly poignant because you are a shining light and you remind us that we have to find that shining light within all of us. So when you use this votive, which we will send to you, uh, please remember us and please remember that you are a shining light and you're inspiring for everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming. I really appreciate you all. Thank you all so much. Um, <clears throat> So moving on, you're welcome to stay here. We have another uh, special treat, uh, and, and that is the induction of uh, some of our new members. We are trying in these last meetings in the Rotary year to uh, induct uh, all of our new members uh, before the Rotary year ends. So I'd like to turn the Zoom podium over to Laura Inns, who is the chair of our uh, membership committee, who will conduct the uh, the induction of the new members. Laura? Hi, everybody. So as Marshall said, I'm Laura Inns. I am the chair of the membership committee. And today we actually, I believe we still have five new uh, members to induct today. So we're very excited about that. And, um, I've, I've told some of them via the chat, but in case they missed it, what's going to happen is we'll, we'll um, I'll read a brief speech that'll talk, that'll say what it is to be a member of this club. Um, and at the end, we'll welcome you to the club and then we'll give each of you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe what you do, where you live, your family, and what it is that brought you to Rotary. Um, and so the people who are being inducted today, just so that everybody can look for their names, um, we have Stephanie, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Lippian, um, Jane Park, um, Oluse, who goes by Sei, Agunde, um, Joseph Leeson, and Don Mitkin. Mitkin. Um, so we're going to welcome all of those new members. Uh, so it is my great pleasure on behalf of the Board of Directors and the members of the Rotary Club of Chicago to welcome each of you as a member of Rotary One. We welcome you not only for the fine fellowship that we shall share, but also for your talents, abilities and enthusiasm that will help us to carry out our many projects to make our community, our country, and the world a better place. Rotary is not a political organization, but all Rotarians are vitally concerned with everything pertaining to good citizenship and the election of good men and women to office. Rotary is not a charitable organization, yet its activities exemplify the charity and the sacrifices that one should expect from people who believe that they have a responsibility to help others. Rotary is not a religious organization, but it is built on those eternal principles that have served as the moral compasses for people throughout the ages. Rotary is an organization of business and professional people pledged to upholding the highest professional standards. Rotarians believe that worldwide fellowship and international peace can be achieved when business people unite under the banner of service. So to our five new members, each of you has been chosen for membership in the Rotary Club of Chicago because your fellow Rotarians believe you to be a leader in your profession and because you manifest the intelligence and commitment of heart that fit you to interpret and impart the message of Rotary. You're a representative of your profession in this club and any information of an educational value pertaining to your profession must naturally come to us through you. At the same time, you become an ambassador from us to your profession and rely upon, we rely upon you to carry the principles and ideals of service, which Rotarians inspire to those who share your professional activity. The community will know and judge Rotary by your embodiment of it in character and service. And we accept you as a member because we know our principles and organization will be safe in your keeping. 
We also expect you to give us the inspiration for today, the illumination that will help us become better Rotarians. And it is with hope that I ask the president of the Rotary Club of Chicago, and this is where normally we would pin you, to um, invest a distinguishing pin of a Rotarian. Now we don't have those pins to give to you today, but we are arranging for them. What you will receive is two pins. One is a um, general Rotary Club pin, and one is the Rotary Club of Chicago, which is Rotary One. It has the numeral one, and even the Rotary logo is a little bit different because it is um, an original um, logo. So um, hopefully we'll get those to you shortly. Uh, at this time, I do want to invite each one of you to say something, and this is an order of uh, how you appeared on the Zoom call today. So we'll start with Stephanie. If you could unmute yourself and share a little bit about yourself. Um, hello, my name is Stephanie Libyan. Um, perfect, just how it was um, pronounced. And uh, here you see a little bit of the reasoning for my joining. Um, I've been familiar with the Rotary Club since a long time ago um, when I won a student of the month scholarship when I was in high school. Um, that was back in Ohio and I you know, have moved all around the country, um, Chicago being my home for the last, um, Chicago part two for the last 10, 11 years. And uh, during this time, um, I became friends with Ed Timo Reebok, who is just a wonderful individual and introduced me um, to the Rotary. You know, we were talking about a passion project that I worked on in Uganda through another organization that I've been a part of, um, building a well for the school and the church there. And so he had suggested that um, I learn a little bit more about Rotary because of um, my passion for international service and my desire to get um, more involved in something that really can make an impact there. So thank you very much for your consideration and inviting me to join the club. I look forward to being um, an active and fun member. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, next up, we'll have Jane, and then on deck will be Sei. So Jane, if you can unmute yourself and go ahead and share a little bit about yourself and what joint brought you to Rotary. Hi everyone, um, uh, my name is Jane Park, uh, as Laura just introduced me. Um, professionally, I'm an attorney uh, specializing in business and corporate law, mostly representing uh, Korean American companies or Korean companies uh, who are trying to uh, move out to here in the US. Uh, I've been involved with the law since 2008 when I was a charter member of a uh, Korean speaking uh, club in the Northbrook area. Uh, I've served as president uh, a couple of times, VP, one once as a treasurer, uh, multiple times as a chair. And I've um, traveled to different countries for various international projects. So uh, the Rotary is really deep in my heart. Um, I took a leave of absence for a couple of years because I had to focus on my uh, practice and also my family. But I visited your club many times uh, you know, when I worked downtown and found it to be very ins inspirational. And I loved the programs you had. And I wanted to expand my Rotary friends beyond Korean speaking. <laughs> so uh, this, is, I, 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 this is a perfect uh, club because it's very ethnically diverse. And uh, it's a perfect match for combining business and service. Because you know, without, uh, you know, without service, business really means nothing. So I am so happy to be a new member and I look forward to meeting you all in person and to know you better. And I am so excited to be a part of this and to uh, ready to serve the community again. Thank you. Welcome to the club, Jane. Thank you so much. All right, um, say if you could go ahead and unmute yourself and then Joseph, you are on deck. Hello everyone. My name is Shay Ogundeji, uh, full name, uh, as you can see on there is Olu Shay Ogundeji. I'm originally from Lagos, Nigeria, and I remember when I was a kid, I saw the rotary um, sign when I, um, when I used to drive with my dad and we passed by the club. Um, I joined the club um, because I was searching for a community of people that was um, interested in serving the larger community. I'm very passionate about teaching diverse peoples about 
um, how to build and advance a career in data analytics. Um, I currently work for Chase as a data scientist, and we've been involved with some projects about teaching um, kids from all parts of the globe about how to um, get into analytics, specifically web analytics, which is um, a, a small niche which a lot of people don't know about. Um, so I'm very excited to be a part of the club and I can't wait to meet everyone in person. Wonderful. Welcome, Shay. Um, Jason, well, or I'm sorry, Joseph. <laughs> sorry about that. That's Joseph Leeson. And then Don, um, I think you're on. There you are, too. So you're after Joseph. We can't hear you yet. Try that again. Well, let's, um, if it's all, should we go ahead? I'm sorry, I seem to have lost even, there you are. Yeah, what, why don't we try Don and then we can go back to Joe. Maybe he can sort out his mic. Okay. So Don, if you wanna go ahead and proceed. Uh, thank you. Um, again, my name is Don Mitkus. I'm the Director of um, Business Development and Clinical Outreach for Banyan Treatment Centers, which is a um, a family of 11 treatment centers that treats uh, substance use disorder as well as uh, mental health issues. Um, and uh, I was invited to join the Rotary by Ed Graziano, um, who I work with, uh, I've been working with for a number of years through our work at Naiba, uh, which is an organization for employee assistance professionals. So we're, um, uh, I've, I've was uh, interested when he made the offer because the uh, opportunity to provide service and be of service to the greater community was something I was very interested in. So I thank you for the opportunity and look forward to being a, a member of the organization. Welcome, Don. Thank you so much. I can tell uh, Joe is working on trying. Do you want to give it another shot there, Joe? Hello, can you hear me? We can. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. I didn't know that. I thought the computer speakers worked, but I don't use this. This is my work computer. I haven't used this for talking off of. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Joe Leeson. Um, I originally hail from Pennsylvania. Uh, I spent four years working as a CPA, and then I come from a family of lawyers, so I like to say I was brainwashed when I was young, so I switched over to law school uh, and went to law school in Indiana for three years. Um, and then after spending three years in Indiana, I now just started uh, this past September at uh, Greenberg Chorig, which is a law firm in Chicago. Um, and the reason I, I joined the Rotary Club is uh, I have um, a very good friend of mine from back in Pennsylvania who's been a Rotary member for a very long time and has had a very re rewarding experience with it. So he highly recommended that I join and I want to get involved in the community. So this was something that I, I, I had researched and, um, and it was, it came highly recommended to me. So thank you for letting me join on. And I, I also look forward to uh, getting involved as well. Welcome Joe. Thank you so much. And thanks for not giving up. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, welcome to the club. So yes, that's very exciting. We had five new um, members today and we do all look forward to getting now, to know you over, um, hopefully lunch one day in person. But until then, uh, hopefully you'll keep being able to attend our meetings because we have some great speakers coming up. Marshall, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, Laura, thank you so much. And let me personally uh, congratulate you all for becoming Rotarians. We are so happy to have you, and we look forward to uh, incorporating you in the club and working with you and sharing fellowship uh, as we uh, go forward. Uh, we really appreciate you being here and, and making the commitment to become a Rotarians. Uh, now is the time in our meeting when we uh, ask if anyone has any joys or concerns to share. We found in the pandemic that the isolation really creates a need for people to uh, raise up concerns or great joys uh, during this period. So it's totally optional if anyone would like to share something 
uh, please unmute yourself and uh, and go ahead. Hi, Marshall. This is Nita. I wanted to share both a joy and a concern. Uh, so thanks for this section. Uh, so first, I'll start with a concern. Um, I've been watching the news in India, Bollywood. There was the death of a famous actor, young actor, 34, and they were suspecting, you know, he committed suicide. It's still under investigation. I, I was concerned because I think uh, COVID might have contributed to it because he was isolated. Mumbai is a competitive area, uh, as it is, like New York City. And uh, also in Bollywood is even more competitive. So there's all, all this concern uh, being isolated from maybe family who would have been a good support. So that's a concern, you know, and it just made me reflect and think of how our connection, I think this is helpful, positive connections like this are so important, sense of community. So that leads into, so I mean, it's just on my mind. I just wanted to share that concern and, you know, it's important to reach out to each other and um, the human connection, if we can talk to each other on the phone, never underestimate what effect that might have on each other. And then the other, um, and his name was Sushant Singh uh, Rajput. So you might, if you, if you Google anything about India, Bollywood actors, so you'll see that sad news. Uh, and then the uh, joy uh, is, is kind of uh, related a little bit because I'm trying to do something positive. So we have, uh, in my brother's memory, we have something um, this Saturday um, yoga day, celebration of International Yoga Day, which if you are on my Facebook, you might have seen that, but everybody's invited and I'm really happy we have a focus on yoga and meditation, which will be positive um, celebration of this. And we're, I'm doing, we're doing this with Indian Consulate and also some Ayurvedic uh, person from India too. So I'm happy that that hopefully will help also to bring that strength, you know, too, for that. So, and I was part of the India consulate event on Sa Sunday for International Yoga Day. It's celebrated by the UN um, for six years, but um, inaugurated by the Prime Minister of India. So it's international one. And it's my first event, you know, in person <laughs> too. So thanks for letting me share. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Nita. I do think before we, we move on, I think uh, we have some other people want to share I do want to highlight the need to remain in contact during this time. We have had several members over the last couple of weeks uh, that we've lost contact with, and uh, we we finally reached them. But it but it's very important if you know someone who is isolated that you haven't heard from in a while, you know, please reach out, please share the you know the one great value of Rotary is our togetherness and that we do look out for each other. So please, if there's someone you know that you haven't heard from in a while, please try to make make contact. So who's next? I think we have uh, Pancho here. Marshall, uh, I just uh, found out that there's, there was an earthquake in Mexico today, mm -hmm. 7.5 in the Richter scale. Uh, Where was it? From Mexico, it was uh, in, in Oaxaca, but it affected Mexico City and other populations. Apparently, uh, there wasn't a fair amount, there wasn't any damage that I can think of. I talk to my sisters and, and brothers and they're okay. So those of you who know people in Mexico, give them a call, make sure they're okay. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, anyone else? Okay, uh, this is the time when we have our guests uh, introduce themselves briefly, tell us where they're from. And if you're a Rotarian to please tell us what club you're from, I think Going down my screen, I think Francis is the first one on the list. Thank you, President. Well, I've already introduced myself. I'm from the Rotary Club of Dumfries in Southwest Scotland. I just, as I said, we're 100 years old next year. I was a, a, a physician and laboratory specialist. Um, now my interest is history. What else can I say? I'm so glad to be here to, oh, I will say something, yes. Our, um, our president tasked us, because next year is the 100th anniversary, to visit 100 clubs, as I've said. But he's also awarded, going to award a prize for the person who visits the most clubs, which looks as though it'll be him. And the one, 
the one who visits the most distant club, which is another member who's, who's visited the Rotary Club in Maui in, in Hawaii. But I'm thinking he should award a third prize for the member who visits the oldest club. I'm not thinking of anybody in particular. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for visiting and for sharing. Uh, we really appreciate it. So the next name I'm probably going to get wrong, Janitha. Oh, it's a tough one. Don't worry about it. Um, actually, you do pronounce it Jacinthe, and that's the French French word for hyacinth, the flower. Oh. Uh, although I don't think anybody is called uh, hyacinth in English, but Jacinthe is a it's a fairly rare French um, French language uh, name. So hello, everybody. I'm. Very uh, happy to join you today from uh, the Montreal area. I am uh, the president-elect of the uh, District 7040 Passport Club. We meet online once a month, and it so happens that our club changeover will take place, of course, online like everything else these days. On the same day as president-elect Eric is going to be um, uh, basically introduced as the new president, uh, but at night. So I guess uh, I'm going to attend, attend Eric's and I'll invite him to, to mine my, my club changeover. But anyone else who is uh, happy, who is free can, can join and, and uh, check this out. Um, and I am uh, someone who uh, truly loves, uh, has a deep love for Chicago. I cannot wait for the next time I visit you guys in person. Um, I've been in Chicago at least seven, eight times, and um, it's a city that I truly love. And I actually was at Rotary headquarters at least once or twice as well. <laughs> Might as well, right? If I'm in the area. So thank you for having me. The guest speaker was excellent. And um, uh, having online meetings has its advantages because we get to uh, participate in those meetings and that, uh, that feels great. So thank you. Thank you very much, and I won't even attempt to say say your first name. I will need a little little bit of practice, but uh, I, I did want to add that I have very, very fond memories of Montreal. It's where I spent my first wedding anniversary uh, with my wife, and it is a truly beautiful city. So thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Uh, it looks like I skipped over Liz, who is... Uh, uh, one of our uh, repeat attendees, but we can't forget her. Uh, Liz, do you want to just introduce yourself to the people on the call? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Liz Goggins. I am a member of the Rotary Club of St. Croix Mid-Isle. Um, we meet Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m., so I'll invite all you guys, but I understand it's very early. Um, and I don't know if anybody, if you've seen on the news about the Sahara dust that's heading towards the continental U.S. Well, it has been here since Friday. Our local visibility is down to about three miles. Um, every, all the planes have to fly IFR. Uh, so it is, it is very bad. And, you know, I hear these reports from the states saying, oh, great sunrises and sunsets. Well, it's so bad here, we can't even see the sun. Mm. So, and, and the health effects are um, intense for anybody with any sort of respiratory illness or um, um, allergies, et cetera. And I know over the years, EMGs have told me there's always a big uh, spike in the number of strokes during Sahara Desert events. So it mm. is a concern to us here. Uh, they say it should be gone by Thursday or Friday. So we're hoping. Hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing, Liz. I do have to admit I was not aware of that, but you will be in our thoughts. And, uh, you know, good luck. Uh, good luck persevering uh, through all of mm -hmm. that. Um, uh, next on my screen is uh, Omolola, who I think has joined us before. Are you still on? Yes, I'm here. Oh, hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> hello, yeah. So I'm Omolola Eniola Oshimbele here from Rotary Club, Delore, Nigeria. So of course, I've always been attending um, Rotary. One meeting, like not my first virtual meeting, I've always been participating even in a physical meeting. So it's always really great to be here with 
uh, my fellow Rotarians, like um, still reaching out to the world. Um, and I'd like to congratulate the Rotary Club of Chicago for like um, the year is uh, President Marshall, like as the year winds up and congratulations for inducting those five new members. In Rotary, this is really like a big deal, like <laughs> it's amazing. So, and I'd like to welcome the new inductees. It's an amazing club. You can be even without the virtual meetings, you can walk into any club or World as a member of the Rotary Club, and you are still accepted and you know, a part of the family. This is one amazing thing I've enjoyed in Rotary. So the first time I uh, visited the United States, like 2016, I went, I made sure that I'm in Chicago, I need to visit the headquarters as well as the Rotary one, which is the first Rotary Club anyway. So I'm always like really um, honored to be a part of this uh, great assembly. So congratulations to all Rotarians as we winds up the Rotary year and hope we'll continue to reach out to the world and connect the world. Thank you, President Marshall. Well, thank you so much for coming and we look forward to seeing you in person in Chicago soon. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. I think the last uh, guest we have is Banked. Bang, are you still, uh, are you on? Bang Holstrom? Oh. He raised his hand, so you're up. You're on mute though. You're still on mute, Bank. Yeah. We need to unmute you here. Can you try to unmute your, your line? You're talking, but we can't hear you. Okay. No. There we go. No, thank you. Thank Hello. you for, for being invited to this uh, fantastic Rotary meeting by Zoom. Uh, I belong to a Rotary Club in Sweden, Hamrik's Rotary Club, and I uh, have been a guest in your club uh, physical and, and now by Zoom. And uh, in our club, we can have no physical meetings uh, because of the corona time, uh, but we sometimes meet in our place where I live, uh, in our garden, because we can be outside in the summertime now. Uh, I really appreciate your Zoom meetings, and uh, today, uh, of course, Harold Green, and also your, your uh, fantastic introduction of new members. I learn something every time I visit your club. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining. It's great to, great to see you again, and we look forward to uh, seeing you. Hopefully, you can, uh, you can make it to Chicago soon when we resume our, our meeting. I would love it. I would love uh, is it. there anyone that I missed? Do we have any other guests that I missed? Um, so moving on, we, um, we have in recent meetings made available chat rooms at the end of the meeting if anyone wants to gather in smaller groups. Uh, we assign people to chat rooms. Uh, it's totally optional, but we would like to provide the opportunity for fellowship because as I mentioned, in these days of uh, COVID, it's difficult to get that, uh, that kind of fellowship. Um, a few other uh, quick announcements before we wrap up. Uh, this is the last meeting at which I'm going to uh, give Eric an opportunity to talk about the, uh, the uh, annual campaign. Uh, he's done a wonderful job of shepherding us through the annual campaign in very, very difficult times. As you all know, this is the fund that helps fund our projects. So Eric, do you want to just take a, a minute and, and make one last pitch? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thanks, thanks, Marshall. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, thank you so far to everyone who has contributed to the annual campaign. Uh, a reminder, you're tired of me saying this, I'm sure, but we have two foundations that we try to fund through this campaign. One is Rotary International, and that's what helps us get all those wonderful global grants and such. And then there's our own Rotary One Foundation, which helps to support, in particular, our community service projects. And of course, we like to see you contribute to both. Uh, we have incentives that try to encourage you to contribute to them. Reach out to us if you want to understand more about that. But um, we try to in encourage it because um, you're able to get uh, Paul Harris Fellowship recognition. That's for Rotary International. You're also able to get uh, Chess Perry. Uh, recognition for contributions to the um, to our own Rotary One 
foundation. And I know um, Ed and the folks at CAM have been doing a good job of going back and looking at the records uh, to make sure that everybody is being properly recognized and anybody who has now become the next level of fellow based on every thousand dollars of contribution will try to be will try to recognize you um, at uh, the installation on the 30th. Also for folks who have um, continued to uh, contribute the, um, the the easy pay funds um, wanted to let you know uh, that since we haven't been meeting in person and therefore not not uh, buying lunch, um, we're going to be pushing those funds towards the foundation um, so that uh, it's it's transparent where that money is going and then you will get the recognition uh, for that just like a donation essentially. So um, we'd like to, to see any folks who have not contributed yet trying to get 100% um, participation. So, so please do contribute, reach out to me, reach out to Cam, reach out to Marshall. We'll, we'll help you. Uh, we'll help take your money. Don't worry. We're, we, we can do that. So thank you very much. And it, as Eric said, next week's installation will recognize uh, some new Chess Perry fellows and people who are, are moving up uh, in the ranks. Um, I'd like to remind everyone to follow their favorite uh, uh, club committee, the International Services Committee and the Community Services Committee uh, are meeting regularly. Um, uh, we have created a new committee that uh, Eric would like to talk about. Uh, we would like to raise the public profile of, uh, of the club. So uh, a, a PR and marketing committee has been created. And Eric, can you just talk about the, uh, the initial meetings? Oh, sure. Uh, we, we had our first kickoff meeting, I believe, last week. Um, we've got uh, three members so far besides myself. Um, uh, Marilyn and Nitha are our co-chairs of that committee. Mark Smith is also engaged in it. We're working very closely with CAM uh, in, this, in this committee. Um, it's a very important committee. Uh, we heard through the outreach that we did as part of the strategic plan that telling people what we do internally and externally was extremely important and we weren't doing a very good job of it. And so as you review the strategic plan, which actually we haven't mentioned that, but uh, you all have received this uh, draft strategic plan. So please do get me back any comments before the end of the month. Um, but you'll notice a lot of things in that plan do relate back to sort of the PR, the marketing side of, of things. Um, and so, uh, there's, a, there's a lot for us to do in this committee this year. So like I said, we only have a few folks uh, so far, but if you're interested, uh, please join. Our next uh, meeting is um, actually Karen or Shelby, can you chime in? Is it uh, July 1st? July 1st at 4 o'clock. Thank, thank you, Marshall. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Eric. And please, uh, you know, if you're interested at all, uh, make sure you join and, and Shelby can connect you uh, and, and people from CAM can connect you. Uh, tonight at 6.30, uh, we are installing a new district governor. The district website has information about how to connect. I encourage everyone to, uh, to uh, join. Um, we want to put a plug in for the Rotary International Virtual Convention, which is going on this week. It started uh, on the 20th and every day there are uh, festivities. I've uh, participated in several. It's a very, uh, very interesting uh, concept, and uh, you should uh, you should all register. It's free of charge, and you can follow the schedule to join uh, when it's when it's convenient. It's a wonderful way to be introduced to conventions, and kind of whet your appetite so that when we return, hopefully in uh, Taipei in 2021. Uh, that you are encouraged uh, to attend. But I uh, encourage you to go to the Rotary International website for information about how to register. Uh, tomorrow night at seven o'clock, uh, Rotary Act has a special event. I saw Donner on the, on the line. Donner, can you tell us about your uh, end of the year celebration? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, it's great to be here and see you all again. It's been a little bit. Um, so on Thursday, we are having our end of year party where we will be having a few uh, special guests, including the district governor, Chuck, who will be, you know, as Marshall mentioned, will be inducted tonight. Uh, but we'll also showcase a few of our individuals uh, and then also our club's achievements as well as then pass, you know, 
uh, introducing the upcoming board. Uh, and so it starts at 7 p.m. And uh, the invite was sent out it, through the gyrator. Uh, and you're, everyone is welcome to join and you're you know, welcome to stay as long as you uh, would like. We're also having a session in the middle so you have a chance to meet some of the rotor actors on a more. Well, I hope to see you there. Thank you very much, Donner. And, and thank you for an extremely successful year for the Rotaract Club. Your leadership really showed the way and you've strengthened the Rotaract Club and really uh, turned it into something very, very special. And so uh, I know that Eric looks forward to continuing to work with the Rotaract Club, as do I. You uh, have done a wonderful job and, and we really, really appreciate it and value our collaboration with you. Yeah, thank you, Marshall. Um, next week's program, uh, as I think has been mentioned, is the installation of our officers. This will be a historic installation, not only because it will be the installation of the 117th president, but uh, Eric and I have cooked up some, uh, some surprises for you. Uh, so I encourage everyone, everyone to join. It is unfortunate that we can't be in person, but uh, looking on the optimistic side, uh, there will be things that have never been done before uh, in an installation. So you want to be a part of it, and uh, we, uh, you know, we welcome we welcome your participation. So today is uh, my last uh, regular meeting, uh, and I wanted to just take one minute uh, to thank everyone. Next week, I will be giving uh, I will have some words. Uh, for the entire assembled masses, but this is the last meeting that I will uh, call to a close. Eric will, I will open the meeting next week, but Eric will close the meeting. And while I had you all at a regular meeting, I wanted to thank everyone for the support you've shown to me. And uh, it obviously was uh, a year that no one could have expected. And through the twists and turns, uh, it's been truly wonderful, and uh, uh, despite the pandemic, uh, we were able to do things that uh, I never would have dreamed possible, uh, and that's because of all of you, uh, not only our members, but also people from other clubs who have participated, and I did want to uh, thank you in a, a more informal environment uh, before I close uh, my last meeting. Uh, one goal that I set for myself was to preside over every single meeting that the club held during my tenure, and it looks like I will be able to accomplish that goal, but uh, really all we've accomplished is, uh, is due to you. So thank you very much. Uh, and with that, we do end our meetings with the, uh, the four-way test. Oh, Marshall, can I just say something really quick? Sure. I just want to say you rocked it. Okay, you, you did a great job in, in leading us. So um, I think everybody should give him give him a round of applause. Thank you. I, I very much, very much appreciate that. Um, and it's, it's totally unnecessary. You should be, uh, you, you're really applauding yourself. So, so thank you very, very, very much. Um, uh, our tradition has been to have uh, one of our international guests. Uh, lead us in the four-way test. We mute everyone on the call except the person leading. And is our a member from, or our guest from Montreal still on the call? Yes, I am. <laughs> could you, uh, could, uh, Shelby, could you mute everyone except her? And, uh, and if you could lead us in the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Great. I shall do that. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? So for the last time, thank you all very much for coming. Have a wonderful day. We will see you soon. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>